Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we did the paper that was on the evolution of delivery in carnivorous clade of minnows, effects on gut size and digestive physiology. Bye, me, Mom. So the introduction, um, animal digestive tract and its associated organs account for up to 40% of the animal's metabolic rate. And due to the high cost of this, um, they can, digestion can generally be tightly regulated in relation to the food intake and the quality. Um, gut capacity in terms of size and physiology should maximize digestion from its natural di diet. Herbivores have longer guts than carnivores carnivores, presumably to allow higher intake of low quality food, um, and this is to maintain some minimum retention time of food, which um, increases the digestive efficiency. Herbivores tend to have higher carbohydrate degrading enzymes than carnivores because they eat a lot of plants. Um, many studies that have compared gut size and digestion, digestive enzyme activities, did so on unrelated taxa. And this was likely confounded by phylogenetic control when they compared analysis of digestion. Um, phylogenetic history of animal can be meaningful effects can have meaningful effects on its gut size and enzyme activity, especially if the dietary specialization is being compared. So the animal they used was the North American minnow, and they offer an array of feeding mod modes in which to study digestion. Um, the majority of these species are carnivorous, but there are some derived herbivorous taxas, and it provides opportunity to investigate the effects of evolution on the size and gut size of digestive physiology. So the purpose of their study was to examine whether the evolution of the digestive tract size and physiology is correlated with the evolution of diet in the North American minnow. So to kind of break down their experimental design before I go into the methods, they kind of broke it down into six parts. So first they um, analyzed the diets of the 11 taxa to confirm that the study fish uh, had dietary affinities reported in literature they had seen before. Uh, they compared gut length and gut content mass as a function of body size among fishes to determine uh, if there's a correlation between diet gut size and food intake. Uh, then they did a qualitative comparison comparison of the teeth among the two different um, genera, and they compared um, activity of five digestive enzymes to compare what kinds of food were uh, in their guts and how they're being broken down, and to observe whether evolution of carbohydrates activity correlated with the evolution of diets as they saw, um, and to compare the concentration of fermentation end products, which would be short-chain uh, short fatty acids. Um, so the methods are really complex, so I just kind of put some bullets and uh, I'll just talk about them as I go through. So they captured fish by electroshocker during the summer months, except for one taxa, which they collected in the fall. And um, then they dissected them on a negative four degree cutting board and removed the guts by cutting at the esophagus and the anus, and then uncoiled them to see length. Um, and then they did a pH analysis, and they removed guts and uncoiled them just like they did for gut length, and then they made incisions in the gut wall, and they used pH paper and dipped it into the gut contents to estimate the pH. They did assays for digestive enzymes, like I said before, uh, gastrointestinal fermentation and gut content analysis. They did a scanning uh, electron micrograph of the teeth, which I'll show you later. And they did a, a couple different uh, statistical analyses and independent contrast analyses. So um, for some of the results, I'll talk about them, and the other ones I'll show you a couple of the figures. So for the gut dimensions, the, um, the carnivorous species had uh, shorter gut lengths in the um, herbivorous species had the longer gut lengths relative to body size, um, except for in one of the clades there, in the cl clade that's all carnivorous except for one species that is herbivorous and also had a long gut. And then they compared their digestive enzymes and their herbivorous species generally had more um, amylytic activity than the carnivorous Nicomas taxa, and they saw laminari, laminari, was observed in the herbivores, and the carnivores ex 
exhibited higher chitinase activity than the herbivores, and trips in the lipase activity did not correlate to the diet. So of the five, two of them were laminated and correlate. And GI fermentation, all the taxa showed at least some capability for microbial fermentation in their digestive tracts, and it wasn't just the herbivorous taxa. So here's our phylogenetic analysis, and this top plate is all carnivorous except for um, this Nicomus taxa, which is the same species as this, but they're um, this is from a they're each from a different river. So based on their environment, this one is herbivorous when this whole plate is carnivorous, and um, this whole plate is all herbivorous. Then. Um, so the the herbivorous taxa had longer guts. And these had the shorter guts, except for this, this gut was a little bit longer based on its reverse diet. Uh, this is just a diet comparison. It's really hard to see because the animal and the detritus uh, were like kind of looked the same. So we tried to look at it, and um, the C here is for carnivorous, and the H here is for herbivory. Um, so this tag, so we were assuming that. The black that looks a little bit more speckly, but not quite as light as this one, to be the um, animal material, and then like the really, really dark, solid black uh, to be the detritus material. So, and I looked on it on like an actual PDF online. It was just the figures was not scanned in well. So this is pretty much just showing you that um, based on if they're herbivorous or carnivorous, that their diet seemed to be accordingly. And after they took out the gut pond. Uh, this was also not a good figure. It was skinned in really poorly. But um, this is of the teeth. Um, so the first one, A, is a carnivore. This is a carnivore. C is the only herbivore. And D is also a carnivore. So um, all the Nicomas taxa had curved teeth that were sharper. Um, to like pierce and shred, and the um, the other species had flatter teeth to like break down cell walls. So it's just more data that's showing based on their diet they need teeth to break down whatever foods they're eating. Why is um, dietary and phylogenetic effects on gut structure and function does exist. Um, the majority of their hypotheses were supported by the evidence, but the one that was not was the tooth hypothesis. hypothesis. <laughs> you can tell. The Campistoma species had flatter teeth than the Nicocomus, um, and the side chain fatty acid concentrations didn't differ between the genre or the associated diet. They found clear associations between the ability to digest starch and dietary affinity. So the more animal material consumed, the lower the analytic activity in the phylogenetic context. Um, this suggests that the evolution of herbivory, or herbivory can lead to an increase in analytic activity. Um, carnivorous fishes have lower intake of food, so when the food is encountered, the mucomus may rapidly increase their digestive enzymes, which results in a higher digestive enzyme compared to the herbivores. And so, the herbivores tend to have food in their guts longer, and the length of the tract is affected by the diet and evolutionary history. So with unspecialized tracts, it makes sense to have elongated intestines, because there's no surface <coughs> area to absorb as many nutrients from the low-quality food. Um, although fishes have anatomically unspecialized digestive tracts, in, comparin can, in comparison to terrestrial and vertebrates, there seems to be subtle differences in the biochemistry of the digestion and gut anatomy, and this allows for dietary specialization because they don't have like Sika or something else that they don't have. Yeah, that's the last thing.